mehomo ne murimo oreko oyo watoma tuohe ire batonua twahana dweri foroli waihura arigitani ne kanyamo kare kugaka ga tuigiria hehoda ga tua moko maitu cio nguyo kahinga mikawa irafu madhukuru ginya kanitha ne mehomo ya toma musie that is the poem Mehomo, which is a translation, uh, trans uh, which is in Gikuyo language, translated to mean breath, which is a poem that I wrote um, sometime last year about the effects of uh, coronavirus and um, the change and the impact that it's having on family structures. Now, welcome to the show. My name is Jerry Wangare. And today I'm excited to be um, joined by my guests um, to have a discussion about language. And there's a reason why I started by uh, reading that piece to you in my mother tongue, because we will be speaking about mother tongue and, the, for African, and, about, and about African languages. Now, I would like to start by introducing um, Mwalimu Godfrey Mbatia. He uh, is a retired teacher. He has been teaching for quite a number of years, and in his retirement, he found a passion and a way to be teaching Kikuyu. Um, also joined, so Mwalimu, karibu sana to the show. Thank you very much. Great, and I'm also joined by Rehema Kibugi. Uh, Rehema is a student. She is, has very many passions, and uh, she plays the piano, and, and she'll tell us a, a bit more about the things that she's passionate about, but she's also an author. She just published a book um, called uh, The Children Who Saved the Mangrove, and we'll be talking to her about, about the book, as well as her passion for uh, learning and her quest to learn her, her mother tongue. Great. So, Karibu Rehema. Thank you. I'd like us to start with you, Rehema. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you love doing. Um, okay. My name is Rehema. I'm 12 years old. I like to play piano, I like to draw, I like to cook, and I like to write stories. All right. And um, what would you say was the genesis for your love of African languages? Um, I would not understand anything my Guka Shushu was saying to me. If I tried to speak Ikuyo, I sounded horrible. So that's why I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, so uh, that is, um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to um, how you and, and, and Malimu met, all right? Um, so Malimu, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you do. My name is Godfrey Batia. I come from Kabete constituency in Kiabu County. I, I am married with three children the two grandchildren, and uh, I went to school at Kibishiko, a little known school. By then we were learning up to class seven, and uh, when I did CPE, I was, I secured a place in Form 1 at the Alliance High School. From there, after completion, I went to a teacher's college and I was trained as a teacher. And that was the genesis of my teaching career. And uh, Malimu, how, for how long have you been teaching and which uh, subjects were you teaching? I have been teaching for over 30 years. And uh, my favorite subjects were English language and the science. So. Now, uh, Molimo, we were just talking about your teaching experience and the, that you have been teaching for, for 30 years. And um, I, I want us to sort of uh, dwell a bit on this, this uh, topic of learning, uh, learning your mother tongue or speaking your mother tongue. What was your experience like growing? Because I know you grew up speaking. Uh, you're speaking uh, Gikuyu, your mother tongue. What was the experience like when you were growing up and, and, and going, going to school? Uh, it was not easy because when we were in school, we were very much discouraged from speaking the language. 
anyone who spoke Kikuyu was uh, regarded in a very low esteem. And those who spoke English well were regarded in very high esteem. I, I think our te teachers had the colonial era hung over. And they still thought anyone who could speak uh, Queen, Queen's English was also bright and they would also perform very well. So I would think uh, our mother tongue was not, was very much uh, put aside when we were learning. And uh, to discourage the, our mother tongue, our teachers introduced a tool called the monitor. And uh, in every morning, it was given to the prefects. And it would be passed to everybody who would speak the mother tongue in the course of the day. So in the evening, uh, the prefect would be asked for the monitor. And he would say, I gave to so-and-so. The so-and-so would say, I gave to so-and-so. And you would see a line of, uh, a line of children who had, in, that, in the course of that day, spoken in mother tongue. And uh, all of them would be punished for either they would be, uh, sometimes they would receive a corporal punishment. And other times they would be asked to do something physical in order to deter them from speaking the language. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that way, the language was, uh, took the, the, the second fiddle in our learning. And uh, we grew up hating our language. But fortunately, there was a mother tongue lesson. But after the mother tongue, no one was allowed to speak it. That's how it was in my days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And um, so I, I resonate a lot with what you've said because I think even for me growing up, and Rehma will, will come to your experience because I think, yeah, we're looking at three different generations and for your generation, you're sort of um, feeling the after effects of what happened to Malimu's uh, generation, what happened in our generation, and sort of so it has sort of trickled down to you. Now, during my time, it was the same experience, having a monitor. Uh, but interestingly, we learned... Um, our mother tongue, and I think this happened across different, uh, you know, because Kenya, there are very many um, languages that are spoken. And I think the learning mother tongue uh, during our time that was in the, in the early 80s was taught up to, in the nursery school, up to class three. But then you could only speak it during the lesson. You could not speak it outside of the lesson. And... Um, it was the same experience. Uh, you know, you were discouraged and so you felt your mother tongue was, was inferior. And to a large extent, you felt African languages. To the extent of now, you know, uh, taking it to Kiswahili, you felt, you know, African languages are, are inferior. Now, coming to you, Rehema, um, what, has been, uh, what has been your experience? Because I know now uh, that now schools, um, mother tongue is not taught in schools. And so what, how has that affected your... Um, your interest in learning and, and knowing your mother tongue? Um, so in school, we always used to think that mother tongue was this unknown language that our parents would speak and we just let it go like that. So it used to be some sort of secret language. They would talk, they would t talk Kikuyu in my case. And I would be like, what are they speaking about? What are they hiding from me? So in school, when we used to have language days and cultural days, we never used to pronounce anything right. We just came dressed up in attire, but we had no idea what all of it was about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's come to um, how did you meet Malimo? And how, or rather, how did the two of you meet? Um, I had a project that was in 2019. I had a project for holiday homework and was supposed, I was supposed to interview a leader 
I was supposed to interview someone from my village, Alida. And I was like, okay, who do I interview? I have no idea who I'm going to interview. So I went to my dad and he thought about it for a while. And he said, why don't you talk to Marimo Batia? I'm like, who's that? So we went to Wemuto and we, I, interview, I interviewed him and for like three minutes. And I gave that project back to school. And we, uh, after the interview, my dad and Marimo spoke for a bit and, and he was telling him, um, we want to learn Kikuyu and we don't know how. Do you mind teaching Rehema? He's like, okay, let's see after school, after school, that is this, the December holiday. So somewhere in October. And that's... Mm -hmm. That was in 2019. Uh, Malimu, had you been teaching Kikuyu before Rehema uh, uh, was brought um, for some lessons? Like I said, I have been teaching. I, uh, when I was trained, I came out of college with these two certificates, one for teaching uh, children and the other one for teaching adults. And uh, even when I was teaching, I had some adults that I was teaching, those who did not go to school or those who dropped out mm -hmm. at uh, an early a class and sorry just uh, sorry to interrupt but just to get this clear you were teaching other subjects not 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 uh kikuyu uh i was teaching kikuyu because okay. there were some people who wanted to learn mm -hmm. to read the bible okay uh, the bible was the problem so i had to teach kikuyu at the same time and uh, besides i was also teaching english to them the two languages mm -hmm. So I would teach them and uh, they would be very happy because uh, that would improve their businesses and they would go to church with a Bible and a read. So it was a, a success for okay. them. Okay. That's how I had it started. And uh, there were also adults who wanted specifically to learn Gikuyu. Mm -hmm. Those who came from the elite class. For example, I know of a lady whose father was a uh, a lecturer at the University of Nairobi who could not speak. And she had come to our environment, uh, environment there. She was just in the neighborhood. So I, I also made an effort of teaching her how to speak the language. Mm -hmm. All that I have discovered, the older a person is, the easier it is to teach a mother tongue. Oh, okay. That's interesting because um, contrary contrary to popular belief that uh, children are usually the ones, uh, especially at the age below, uh, I think it's below uh, six years, they have the ability to grasp even up to three languages. Yes. They have the ability to, yes. to learn up to three languages. Yeah. So your experience is different. That, I thought the same. All right. But through... Uh, experience, mm -hmm. I came to realize that the older, the easier. All right. Yes. Okay. Those children who are at seven years are a problem to teach at a seven. <laughs> you take longer. Okay. But those who are above, yeah. you take a shorter time. Uh -huh. Yes. We'll come, back. we'll come to the actual lesson and how you do it and uh, the age groups that you normally teach. But I'm, I'm very interested in that um, first encounter with, uh, with Rehema and Rehema, um, uh, what was the experience like the first time? How did you start? Did you start with A, A, E, A or O or what, you, what was the first lesson like? Every, every lesson, especially... Uh, Concerning a language, you have to st start with the sound. Okay. Uh, now, there are vowels, just as we have in, um, in uh, English. And there are also alphabets, just as we have in English. For a queer language, there are seven, as opposed to five in the English language. And when we have come to the alphabets, there are so many of them that you'll miss out. For example, we don't use L. Okay, we don't use F. 
but the sounds are there mm -hmm. with other uh, alpha, with other uh, uh, letters. Mm -hmm. They are there. So we, we, they are not missed out. Mm -hmm. We also don't have S, but the sound is there because C is there. Mm -hmm. to substitutes. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started with the Rehema. Rehema had uh, no knowledge of the Kikuyu language. I don't know, I think, I don't know, but I presume she was born outside Kenya. Um, I don't know whether... She was born here, but they quickly moved they to, quickly to Canada moved, and they were there so for quite a while. She's a child of two worlds. <laughs> so when I started teaching her, she knew nothing not even how to greet a person. She knew nothing. Okay. She is the type of the, the student or a person who would say, instead of, she knew uh, shosho, but the, the, the pronunciation was shosho, mm -hmm. not so so. Mm -hmm. You know, S, H, <laughs> you see? So I had to do a lot of correction right. uh, to make her understand that uh, we don't have S and those are, just uh, the dynamics of the language, uh, because we have gone to Shen so much. But I wanted to teach her the correct language. All right. Yes. Um, Rahema, what was your experience like? What has there and, and, and just this is speaking from the time that you started to where you're at now. What has the experience been like for you? It was really fun. So. Gradually, you understand common conversations. So, after a few classes, I went home and I was reading a book. And then my mom and dad are speaking about something, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I can understand." So I, I was like, "Okay, let's continue these classes. Maybe I can get to get to understanding more of this." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it began with you understanding what your parents are talking exactly. about. Exactly. <laughs> How long until you also could speak? And also, how long, how further along until you could write? Um, by the end of the year, I could speak. And by the end of, by mid-2020, I could write. Okay, okay. So, um, and this brings me to, um, tell us the story of how you ended up becoming um, pen pals with uh, Professor Ngugi Wathiongo. So, it was somewhere in July, and... We have this is July last year. Last year, yes. Okay, okay. July last year, and I was I was reading some of my books, and I saw a book by Kobe Wadiong. I don't remember which book it was because he has so many. He has, yeah. He's written quite a volume of work. So I was looking at it. I was like, okay, let's read it. So I read it with my mom because I couldn't understand most of it. So I read it with her, and I was like. Okay, this is interesting. So I had just discovered that you can email authors. I was like, you can do this. You can actually email. So I emailed him just before a cl Akikui class online. Where did you get his email? I don't know. I don't <laughs> remember. I actually okay. don't remember. All right. So I, I emailed him in broken Kikuyu English. And I was like... Let's try. He'll probably not respond. So I went to class. Then after class, I just see from Google. So you know, this is interesting. So I read. He wrote back the same he day. He wrote back the same day, like an hour after I sent it. Whoa. I know. <laughs> so um, he wrote back and I read it. I'm like, Okay, this is good. So, well, I, were you able to sorry to interrupt? But were you able to comprehend everything that he wrote back? Not everything quite, okay. but the the point was he responded. Yes. So I went and I showed my mom and my dad, and I, I didn't think it was like a big deal. I was like, he responded. Let's just show them. Nothing will happen. And they're like, oh my gosh, you actually wrote and he responded. So. That's how it started. Okay, okay. So as I as I talk to Malimu, I'd, I'd like you, I'd like us to. Uh, I I know now when you look back at the email that you wrote him, and it had a bit of broken kikuyu. <laughs> I'm sure you cringed, but all the same, um, I'd like us. To, I'd like you to read it uh, to us and a few sentences from what he responded. Um, so as 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 you fish it out, uh, Malimu, um, how did it make you feel? when you got to learn that uh, Rehema had learned uh, Kikuyu to the point where she was very confident to write to one of, um, 
of the most, uh, I think uh, Gugewa Thiongo has been one of the greatest proponents of the Kikuyu language. So what was your reaction when you got to learn that you had written to him and he had responded? I was extremely happy about it. And uh, Gugu himself also wrote to me an email and uh, applauded me for, for having mm. made uh, a person learn a mother tongue. And uh, that's how I got some students in the U.S. Okay. Because he told me that uh, he would uh, uh, look for students, and surely he did. And he told me he would organize a class, and he did. And uh, he was extremely happy as well. And uh, he told me to continue. In fact, Goge uh, told me that he is looking forward to coming to Kenya and see me. He was extremely <laughs> happy. Wow. <laughs> well, have, you had, um, have you had a video call with him where you were able to actually see each other? Oh, I have had a video call with his son, Professor Mukoma. And uh, he was also extremely happy. You know, he is a, a, a professor of English of languages in the uh, in the University of Cornell in New, in New York. He was extremely happy. He was calling me every now and then, uh, telling me that he would like even his wife. You know, he's married to a white, uh, and the child to learn. And uh, I think I started with, with his family before I went to other places. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, an extremely uh, exciting experience. I can imagine. And for you, and I, I think also the, the sense of um, affirmation and just having, uh, you know, uh, someone like uh, Professor Ngoge applauding you for the work that you're doing and... You know, just getting that, uh, I'm sure it made you feel you're on the right path. Yeah. And um, so you mentioned that, you know, we started with his family uh, and you've been teaching them. Uh, and um, I, I know we didn't, we didn't talk, we didn't talk about your age, but uh, your, your, I have <laughs> your no, generation. I have no problem. I have no problem. <laughs> my, my, I can mention my age. I, I have no problem with my age. All right. Yeah. Um, so what I so what what where I was going with this is um, for a lot of uh, people your generation, um, technology has be, has has been quite a challenge, and the transition to using computers, even the using of mobile phone, has been a, an extremely um, difficult uh, trend for most. And and for a lot of them, for those who computers found them in the job market, the, most of them opted to retire. So I'm really fascinated by how you were able to transition. Uh, you know, having been in, you know, you've, you're retired from teaching, but then there's this, uh, uh, you know, interest in learning. And then most of your students happen to be away. How was that transition for you, um, you know, using computers and teaching virtual classes? <laughs> uh, yes, I belong to the uh, analog <laughs> because of age, as you have said. Yes. And uh, that was a dilemma in uh, my teaching profession, when I, I, especially in the Gekuyo language, uh, especially when the corona came, because before then I was teaking in person, mm -hmm. face to face with my students. But now a time has come when all that is halted all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, the first person to approach me was her father, through her grandfather. And I told the grandfather, no, 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 you know our age. We cannot do that. Yeah, I, I look for somebody for him. <laughs> I look for somebody. That's why that's a message I I, I relayed. And uh, the grandfather told the son, well, the teacher said that he will look for a teacher for you. The, 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 the father insisted. You know, I have also taught the father somehow. So he insisted that I just wanted him to do it. Uh, the father told uh, the grandfather told him, he said he can't do that because for one, he's not very much conversant with a computer. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had done the basic only. 
And uh, I had a phone. He told me you can you he told me you can use the phone. No, 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 I don't know. Let me give you somebody else who can do it very well. The young people. So it did come naturally. You <laughs> yes. were quite resistant. <laughs> yes. And then uh, it was the time that he sent me to a cyber, okay. the father. All right. Told me go to a cyber if you have a good phone, a smartphone, and uh, ask them where, whether it can work. So when I went. Uh, the, uh, the, the cyber guy told me, yes, this one can work. Mm -hmm. And he installed the Zoom. Yes. So, and then I called him, yes, it can work. We can try. <laughs> 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 and you know, okay. I had a computer that I had stuck to somewhere. I was not using it, a laptop. Mm -hmm. So I, I was not interested, let me see, oh. in the first place. Right. Because I found it a Buddha. Uh, the only thing that made me go into that was the respect for the father. Mm -hmm. So I said, I don't want to annoy that family. Let me just do it. Oh, <laughs> wow. okay. And okay. so I started. All right. And uh, only to realize that it was extremely enjoyable. It was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, an experience that I would like to live with. I, I wouldn't even like to go back to... <laughs> In-person visits. In person visits. <laughs> It was tedious. Oh, and the commute. Yeah, uh, it mm. was tedious. Yeah. And me, you know, I am not very good at driving. So most of the times I leave my car and commute using a matatu. Mm -hmm. So you see, it was a bit complicated. So I found the method of teaching online the best up wow. to now. Mm 